Welcome to another session of Math Snacks with Miss Glovely and Miss Wonderful. You know, Miss Glovely, I have been doing really a great job in school with just addition of whole numbers. But now all of a sudden the teacher is expecting me to do integer addition. And I don't understand it. Sometimes my answer is supposed to be smaller than what I start with, and I just don't understand it. Well, that's pretty common, Miss Wonderful, because most of the time we're just taught a rule, but we don't know why it really works. So let's start with a fairly simple problem today, and we're going to use some different types of manipulatives so that you can see why the rule works. That would be really good because I am really confused. Okay, let's start with a manipulative that most teachers may not have seen, and that is tile spacers. Tile spacers are fun to use because they look like positive numbers, and if you cut them, you also have the negative numbers. Awesome! It's like a plus sign and a minus sign. Exactly. Cool! Exactly! So let's start, let's start with the thing that you say you've done well at. Okay. Okay, when we have a problem... I'm really good at addition. ...with 6 plus 3. And mm -hmm. if we were going to use this manipulative, what would that look like to you if you were going to represent that problem? And these are my whole numbers, yes. positive whole numbers? Yes. So I need six of them. One, two, three, four. They kind of got to go like that. Five, six, okay. plus three. Because if you turn them the other way, they look like multiplication instead of positive. They six. do. They do. Okay. So, okay. Right. You've represented exactly like you need to. You have six positives and three more positives. And you'll notice that when you did the addition, you put those onto the mat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so addition means to put on or put together. And so you've done that. And the answer so would be... So do I need to put them together? You could put them together and you end up with... Nine. Exactly. So let's look at this one. What if we have negative four there plus... There comes those negatives. I know, but don't, don't be afraid. Here they are. Remember that this means to put together or put on. What would that look like? What problem would that look like? Can I write put on beside that? Because you, that'll help me remember. Okay. This means to put on the mat. Uh-huh. Okay. Or put together. Uh -huh. Maybe I should have put put together. Either way. So I'm going to clean that problem off. Okay. So I need to put on negative four. Where do you get these at anyhow? At any cool. at any uh, store where they sell tiles. Gotcha. You can you can buy rubber ones and they're easy to cut apart. So negative four, and then I'm going to put on and put together with the negative four, neg three more negatives. That's correct. So when I combine the set together, I have negative seven. Exactly. Now think about a number line. Think about your number line. Negative four is right here on your number line. And when you put three more negatives, did your answer get larger or smaller? It get got smaller. It got but smaller. But why didn't I add? Why did I not go this way? Because I always add this way. Well, remember what you were do adding. You were adding a negative. You started at a negative number on mm -hmm. the number line. And then you put on more negatives, which so. moved you not to the right, but to the left, left on the number so line. So if I put on a negative, I've got to move this way. Right, because it's the opposite. This sign could actually be read the opposite of 5. Okay. Because it's on the opposite side of 0 from the whole number 5. Okay. And so when we add positive whole numbers, we always move to the... Right. And when we and add negative, negative whole numbers, we move to the left. left. Okay. Can we try some more? Sure. What if we make it a little more difficult now? Let's say the problem is 6, going back to that positive 6, and we're going to add a negative value this time, negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to add 6 pluses. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put on 6 pluses. That's where the problem starts. And I'm going to also put on 2 negatives. Right, now that's a problem because... What? I have 8. Well, do you have 8? Because look at these. What did we say this and this were to each other. Oh, on the number side, they were the opposite of each other. Right, so if this one, let's get the number line back. 
if I have a positive one, which we have here. Oh, we need to move we it need up. To go up. Mm -hmm. If I have a positive one mm -hmm. and a negative one, mm -hmm. and I move them towards each other, what do they do to each other? Where will oh, they meet? They end up at zero. They're right. not worth anything. They're not worth anything. They're a zero pair. And so those, when we go back to your problem, where you had a positive six and a negative two, these two are zero together. And those two are zero together. So I can just take them off because they're, they're zero. They're, they're not zero. Anything. Exactly. So I could just wipe them away. Exactly. And what's your answer now? Four. Right. So now this is where you were getting confused because you had started at a six, but your answer is smaller, and it was an addition problem. So would you like to try some more? Sure. The Let's continue on. Okay. Let's try with a different manipulative this time. Okay. okay. How about if we... You know, it's a lot better doing them with manipulatives than just trying to do it on paper pencil. Because that was so confusing. I agree completely. Can I move this? Sure. Okay. Let's use that same idea, but this time we're going to use two colored counters because I know a lot of teachers have these in their classroom. And with two colored counters, you can decide which side is the positive and the negative, and you can even mark that. Or you can find out a little bit more about real world. Do you know a real world thing about colored numbers? I do. What is it? My checkbook's always in the red. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. That is absolutely not and good. And being in the red means I'm minus. You're, you're on the negative Which side. Which means you're... I'm negative. Right. Boo. Boo. Okay, usually the other color that's associated with, with numbers is black. black. Not not this yellow that we have, but black. Okay. And you know where all that came from? Mm -mm. This wonderful. Where that came it? from accounting, the color of the ink that the accountants used to use. Red meant not a good thing. Red meant that the person was losing money. Red doesn't mean a good thing negative. either when the teacher marks your paper up with red. That's right. And black being in the black means okay. that you actually have money. We'll write with black. Okay. So... Why don't you set up a fairly simple addition problem using both a positive and a negative value? Can I choose the problem? Sure. I'm going to do, using a positive and a negative, yes. 8 plus a negative 6. Okay, so this time 8 is our positive. So we're going to go with what would normally be black, and we need 8 of those. That's Can I help you? Sure. It makes it go faster. 8. Positive. Let's, let's line them up okay. so we make sure we have eight. Okay. And then if we're going to add to that a negative six. One, two, two three, four, five, and six. And if we take what we just learned a minute ago. That a positive and a negative equals zero. So I'm going to take this positive and negative and I'm going to take it away. Okay. And this positive and negative and swoop it away. Positive, negative, swoop it. I like to call those zero pairs. Zero pairs are going away. And what are we left with? Two positives. Two positives. So we have a... Do I have to put the plus sign here to tell me it's you positive? You don't have to put the plus sign. We assume that it's there because it doesn't have that opposite sign or that negative sign. Gotcha. Okay. I see. You ready for a different manipulative? Oh, we get more toys? Oh, sure. Awesome. I love playing with the manipulatives. They make it so much easier for me to understand. You can do the same thing once you kind of understand the rules with playing cards. Because okay. they are the black and the red. So let's say we have... This time we're going to do it a little differently. Let's see if you can a little trans different. translate this problem. What ah, would this be? I got a negative 1 or a negative 7. Negative 7. I have negative 7. And this time, we're going to add to that a positive 5. Negative 7 plus a positive 5. Okay, so this time, if you go back to what we did here, this dot, this clover, or club, would cover up this heart. Okay, can I cover them up with something? Sure. Okay, I'm just going to use these to cover. Okay. So that one goes with that one. Mm-hmm. This one goes with this one. Mm-hmm. This one goes with that one. This one's going to cover that one. There's zero pairs. Right. And I'm all done covering that one, and I end up with a negative two. Correct. Are you starting to see a pattern here? Zero pairs. Just look at this pattern. Here you started with a positive eight and a negative six, and your answer was positive. Here you started with a negative seven 
and a positive 5, and your answer was negative I got five. it, I think. If whatever I start with, my answer is going to be positive or negative. So if I start with positive, my answer is going to be positive, and if I start with negative, my answer is going to be negative. Let's try that and see if okay. you're, you're correct. What if, here's another manipulative, what if you start with three red unifix cubes? That's a minus three. Okay. So my answer is going to be minus. Okay, let's see if you're right. Okay. And this time we're going to add to it a positive four. A positive four. Four. Now zero pairs out. Take your zero pairs out. Take my zero pair. Well, I can just match them up like this right. and go like this. Okay, so those are gone. Zero pairs are gone. And my, oh, my answer is not negative one because it's black. Yeah. It's a positive one. So did your rule follow? No, but let me look again. Okay. I thought, first I thought it was because it was positive, positive, and negative, negative. Right. But it's whichever number is the largest. Right. Whichever numeral. So whichever numeral, digit or numeral, is largest, then if I add them together, my answer is going to be whatever positive or negative based upon that. Okay. Let me throw one more thing in here. Okay. Okay. Because one thing we like to call it at my grade level is... Really, it's not necessarily the numeral. It's how far that numeral is away from zero. So in your problem, which was negative three. Negative three right here. Mm -hmm. Can I just, just mark, mark it? Mm -hmm. Negative three, and, and I the, added four. Added four. So when you added four, you came the, to the positive direction because you were adding a positive number, and you ended up here at one. Uh -huh. This negative three is three away from zero. Mm -hmm. A positive four is four away from zero. And that's called absolute value. That's how the distance each of those numerals is away from zero. So actually your rule that I'm probably sure a teacher taught you, but it didn't make sense at the time, was that this eight has a larger absolute value than this negative six because it's, it's further from zero. From zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it has a larger absolute value, so that's your, what sign you're going to have when you add the positives and the negatives. Gotcha. Making more sense? It is making more sense. And we've used several different manipulatives that anybody should have available to them to figure this out. I really like the plus and minus tiles. Like they those. really under I really understood those you a really lot. I really like that. I really liked those. The number line still is a little confusing for me. It can be. But I think if I think about the red and black chips and the plus and the minus, it will help me thinking about my addition problems. Okay, let me just give you one more little hint about the number line. If okay. you always remember that wherever you start the problem, if you're adding positives, you move to the right on the number line, and if you're adding a negative, you move to the left. Gotcha. Well, thank you, Miss Glovely, for helping me with the integer edition. Most certainly. Thank My you. pleasure. And join us again for Math Snacks.